They may not have been the most talented Olympians, but they were by far the most entertaining. The last time the Olympics were held in Canada, it was four men from Jamaica who made international headlines, making them legends in the history of bobsledding and heroes in their own native Jamaica. 16 by 9's Mike Armstrong traveled to the sun and sand to spotlight the men who stole our hearts. Dudley Stokes didn't keep the scrapbook, his wife put it together. He says the memories are enough for him and he has plenty. 1988 Jamaican bobsledders were the biggest story of the Olympics other than maybe Eddie the Eagle. But you guys were more legitimate than Eddie the Eagle. I mean, no offense to Eddie. We like to think so. <laughs> now more legitimate? Absolutely. More likely? No. Jamaica doesn't exactly have a long history of bobsledding. It's a little short of snow and ice. This is about as close as any Caribbean country comes to the sport. Push carts. It's a little like soapbox derby, just more dangerous. An American living in Jamaica, George Fitch, watched the National Pushcart Derby one year and a light bulb went off. A country with so many strong and fast athletes should have a bobsled team. Can you imagine a Jamaican bobsledder? The idea was strange enough it grabbed the imagination of Hollywood. In 1993, Disney made Cool Runnings. The late John Candy played the character based on founder George Fitch. Always remember, your bones will not break in a bobsled. No, no, they shattered. Now the movie plays a little loose with the facts, but the part where they had trouble finding athletes is true. Who wants in? Fitch turned to the military to find a team. Stokes was a helicopter pilot. They asked if he wanted to be a bobsled driver. His reaction? What's a bobsled? I had to go and do some research because I had no idea what that was. <laughs> that was the start. But then I discovered that the thing had to be driven and that interested me. Calgary, 1988. The Jamaicans are, to say the least, an oddity. They didn't even have a sled for the four-man event until they got lucky and found an old one someone had forgotten about in a storage room on the mountain. How are you doing? Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> now, Dudley's brother Chris was a sprinter studying in Washington, dreaming of running in the Summer Olympics. He watched the Calgary opening ceremonies from his dorm and then drove to Calgary to watch his brother. I had no idea in my head at the, at the time that by the end of the week I'd be in, a, in an Olympic race. It's one of those truth is stranger than fiction moments. Chris was supposed to be just a proud spectator, and then fate stepped in. On Tuesday, we have an accident. One of the guys loaded onto the sled falls off and hurts himself, I mean, really badly. So now that we have decided to go into the four-man event, now we don't have four men. What they did have was a fast spectator, but there was a problem. He was not an athlete in the Olympic Games. He had no accreditation. No way that the games were one week old. All right, your yeah, accreditation cut off is Some months like before. three I'm months know. before. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, it's an issue. You know, it's yeah. an it's issue, a little right. issue. <laughs> and so it was just a real stretch, but George Fitch got going and, you know, all sorts of things. And, and he got him accreditation. Yeah. That does in itself a miracle. But yeah. he turned up and he had the pass. Yeah. And I, I, I was asleep. Yeah. In, in the village with a big um, thing that says, athlete from my soul for the week before. So, so there, there's your cool. plans for uh, for four years later. Oh, I, I'll cross out the Olympics. I did that this week. The team went into the competition with barely any practice together. Their first run was terrible, their second a little better. In the third, they had a good start, one of the best of any country, but it didn't end well. They had jumped in too tight, Dudley had trouble steering, they got into what's called a wave and crashed. I hit my head at about 80 miles an hour on the ice and it stayed on the ice for another 600 meters. I just remember, you know, okay, so this doesn't feel too right. And a little, little bang, but I'm not sure. I, do, I don't know that I've turned over until now I start to, to smell my helmet, which is fiberglass burning on the ice, which is something that stays with you for, for many years afterwards. Now the story could have ended there. Four humiliated Jamaicans and a walk of shame. The thing is, someone clapped. I had my head down. And all I, all I could hear was my spikes crunching through the ice. I mean, every step it was like amplified in my brain. And then I started to hear this cheering and I lift up my head a little bit. We walked sort of right through the finish and so on, but, then, but the crowd started cheering and waving. So, you know, the guys started cheering and waving back. <laughs> The 
This was the moment immortalized in the movie, a terrible letdown that turned into something special. And, and that sort of support from the Canadian fans to me really gave the impetus to what has developed as Jamaica bobsleigh over, over two decades now, uh, and which we remain very grateful for. Now again, it wasn't quite how it happened. They didn't carry the sled, they pushed it, and the crash wasn't caused by human error. But I like the movie version better. I think there was a serious mechanical <laughs> feel. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go with that. Yes, that's pro. <laughs> that, that documentary that Disney made, yeah. Yes, that documentary uh, got it just right. Excellent work. It's now been more than two decades since the Calgary Games, but the Jamaican bobsledders have left a legacy. All right, you're going to go quickly to your right. Some of which is almost as unbelievable as the story itself. A new tourist attraction outside Montego Bay now includes a gift shop full of bobsled merchandise, a museum to the team, and a bobsled run. Well, sort of a bobsled run. Mini sleds run through the forest. If you take it by the way, be careful. It stops very suddenly. Oh. I know you have this uh, nice ice house in Calgary. Huh? Yeah. Let's give us a few more years. The other part of the legacy is the team. Chris and Dudley went to two more Olympics. They got to where they were ranked eighth in the world. In fact, the International Bobsledding Federation one year held its annual meeting in Jamaica. Okay, this was our first attempt at a push track. The legacy also includes facilities and a future. The current Jamaican bobsledders are part of the sports college outside the capital. They missed this year's Olympics, but they're already working towards Russia in four years. Their practice facility isn't much to look at. Two, three. But they say they'll be ready. This isn't a country with Canada's resources, but it produces athletes. The fastest man alive, Usain Bolt, ran a 9-9 on this track just a few months ago. It's not about where you train. It's about how hard you train. People who come into the program need to understand it's not about money and facilities and being able to travel as opposed to drive or being able to get a brand new sled as opposed to a used sled. It's about the attitude that you bring to the starting line when the clock starts at 60 seconds and it's Jamaica one's turn. And you never yeah. want to hear anybody use that training facility don't, as an excuse. Don't want to hear about it. Don't want to hear about it. That is, that is massive progress. The two brothers have gone on to other careers. Dudley's a transportation broker. Chris has his own financial services company. But both of them are still deeply involved in the bobsledding program. Just about any gift shop in a Jamaican resort or at the airport includes something bobsled related. They're that big. They're both proud of their legacy and what they accomplished. But with each passing year, even though they lived it, they find it harder and harder to believe. The whole story is, is, is very unlikely. You know, it's the thing they make hope. movies about. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I guess they did. Yeah. But, um, but that's, that's the truth. It's, it's just uh, it's a very unlikely thing to have happened.